Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus this morning. We thank him for giving us another opportunity, amen, to be back in his house. The week may not have looked like you wanted it to. The day may not have looked like you wanted it to, but God is still worthy, and he is still good. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we come to give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to allow the young people to go forth this morning, and I just ask that you pray for them as they go forth, as they go forth, and um, encourage them and just get involved. Amen? Amen. We're going to go ahead and open up with prayer by Sister um, Olivia Smith is going to come and pray for us, and then we're going to have scripture reading. Well, they're going to come and quote their scriptures, and then following by following their scriptures, we'll, we'll have our welcome, and then we'll be in the hands of Miss Alea Haskins for testimony service. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want God to have his way, and we're going to le- just let go and let God. Amen? Amen. Come on forth, Miss Alea. I'm going to ask if everybody would please stand. And bow your heads and close your eyes. I thank God for working it. Thank God for everybody that came. Amen. Amen. All right. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. It's out of John 3 verse 16. Amen. I will bless you Lord all, all time in his, in his church so he will be by my father. John chapter 34 verse 1. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Philippians 4 14. Clap my hands. How about you? I'm going to sing my song today. How about you? Hallelujah. I'm going to raise my voice. Hallelujah. How about you? Let's praise the Lord. Everybody who came here today, I thank for I thank Lord for everyone who didn't make it today. I, I hope they're safe. And then testimony service is now open. Amen. 
he's so good hallelujah just a quick little praise before the young people come and it just says there's a praise on the inside that i can't keep to myself a holler stirring up from the depths of my soul so excuse me if i seem a little giddy or maybe even strange but praise is the way i say things there's a praise on the inside that i can't keep to myself a holler stirring up from the depths of my so excuse me if I seem a little giddy or maybe even strange. Hey, but praise is the way. Praise is the way.
nobody but God that's keeping us. Hey, hallelujah. Somebody didn't wake up in their right mind or know who Jesus is this morning. Hey, but we know him. Hallelujah. And I thank him. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. for his goodness amen hallelujah they're gonna come forth with a selection and just ask that you would pray for them they're gonna come and sing inside out amen amen
Amen. Come on and let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God the best praise you can give him. Hallelujah. Now come on and open up your mouth and fill this place with your worship. Hallelujah. Fill this place with your thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 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 If you don't know what to say, just tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Just tell God thank you. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you. God, we worship you. God, we lift you up. Oh, God, we rejoice because you are a good God. You are a great God. And you're worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you for today. We thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you for being a mighty God. God, we thank you for seeing everything, knowing everything, you in control. And God, we thank you for being an all-powerful God. We thank God for you don't lie. Oh, God, and you are a God of your word. You've never left us. You won't forsake us. And God, as we go forth in your word now, we ask God that you help me to preach your word. Let me say only what you want me to say, how you want me to say it. Let your word go forth with clarity and conviction. Oh, God, and we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Come on and put your hands together and give God a praise. And while you're yet standing, let's go to the word of God on this morning. We're going to Psalm 100. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 100. Amen. Psalm 100. Amen. Amen. Man, the word of the Lord says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generation. Amen. The word of God is blessed. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And we thank God and we honor the Lord this morning for our pastor and our first lady. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. I thank God for my own wife. Amen. To Sister Jessica, to all the deacon brothers, to our missionary. Amen. To all of the saints of God. Amen. It's a blessing to be in the house of God on this morning. Amen. And I thank God for God being God. Amen. I thank God for how awesome he's been in our lives. Amen. And how he's shown ourselves strong, himself strong on our behalf. Amen. And I thank God for the word this morning coming from Psalm 100. And we're going to preach from the thought how we should come to church. How we should come to church. You know, people bring all kind of stuff to church now. We bring Bibles. We bring purses. We bring wallets and tablets. We bring cell phones. We bring our instruments. And each one of those things are useful in its place during worship. The problem is now is that we now come to church with different mentalities and different agendas when it pertains to what church is all about. We come to church, we bring our problems, we bring our bills, we bring our wants, we bring our trials, we bring our burdens, we bring our questions, we bring them to church. But the problem is, is that we never really give them to God. 
We bring them, we pray about them, we shout on top of them, but when church is over with, we pick the same things back up and take them with us when we leave outside of the church wall. But Psalm 100, we read it in the perspective all the time of just simply praising God. But Psalm 100 teaches us as the people of God how we supposed to come to church. First of all, we have to come with the right spirit. In verse 1, we are told to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So let's break this down and see what he's commanding us to do. First, there is the word make. That means I can't come to church and be lazy. I can't come to church and expect my husband or my wife or my mama or my daddy to get my blessing for me. I have to come to church and the word make means that I have to do something. That means I got to put forth an effort. So then there's this word joyful, which tells me not only should I be doing something, but it gives me the attitude in which I should be doing it in. Can I preach up in here? Then lastly, we have the word noise, which tells me how to do it. So it says make, I have to do something joyful, how I should do it. Noise tells me that I can't be quiet. I got to make a little noise. I got to let you know that I'm here if I'm really saying that I glory. Or if I God that I really thankful to God, then I'm gonna tell God thank you. How do you know somebody is thankful to you? It's how they interact with you. Hallelujah! Can I preach up in here? You don't want to do something for somebody who gonna act ungrateful, who gonna act like they just using you. And so when we come to church now, it's like we using God. We don't tell them thank you. We ain't showing how grateful we are. All we come to church and do is ask them for stuff. God, I need a beer pay. I need this to happen. I need that to happen. But he sometimes he want to hear you tell him thank you. He want to hear you tell him, Lord, I love you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I exalt you. But above all of this stuff that I got going on in my life, I need you more than anything. So when we put all this stuff together, we can see that the psalmist, he's calling on us to raise our praise to God because he's a worthy God. Psalm 122 and 1, the word of the Lord says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We should not want to come to church. But we living in a time now where a lot of people don't want to come to church. Why? Because it's easily to be influenced by the ways in the society of the culture that we living in today. Because it seems like everything is available outside of the church. And when some people look at the church, they have their eyes on the wrong thing. Can I preach up in here? We need to be encouraging people to keep their eyes on God. Because if you look at a man long enough, he's not, he going to fail you eventually. Can I preach up in here? So if you're looking at a man, eventually that man is going to fail. But if we encourage people to look at God, then God won't fail them. Can I preach up in here? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, our response to going to church shouldn't always be, oh, man, we got church tonight. Every time we have church, it shouldn't be, oh, man, I got to get up and pray. Oh, man, I got to stop what I'm doing because we got Bible study. Oh, this Sunday morning, I'm so tired. I worked all week and, and did what I wanted to do on Saturday, but now it's Sunday. I'm, now I'm all of a sudden so tired that I don't feel like can I be real and preach up in here that now I don't want to go to church. And I also understand, yes, we do get physically tired, and sometimes the week don't go as we want it to go, but every time we have service, it shouldn't be a pull for us to get here. See, real praise can be heard. Real praise can be seen. And real praise is not ashamed or hidden. He gets no glory when we hold our praise in. And this is why we push the issue when we come to church to clap your hands, to open up your mouth because it ain't praise unless he told us we have to make a joyful So praise is an outward expression of an inward feeling. 
My wife wouldn't know how much I love her unless I showed her, unless I told her. Can I preach up in here? We have to, we, we holding all of our feelings for God on the inside because we so occupied with the trials and the tribulations and the stuff that's attacking our families on the outside. But when we come in here, we have to come in with a mind to give him glory. Which brings us to the problem we have when we come to church. It's found in verse 2. We come to church with a mind to receive. But the word says that when we come, we have to have a mind to serve. The word says serve the Lord with gladness. See, one thing we forget as the people of God that we were bought with a price. So we don't belong to ourselves no more. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, it says, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So when we got saved and when we come to his house and when we acknowledge him, we become God's property. So what that means is when we come here, we're supposed to do what he wants us to do. Can I preach to y'all up in here? Now we've got it in our mind that we're going to do the same thing, the same way every single Sunday. And we didn't, we didn't exclude God out of his own worship service. Can I preach up in here? We doing what we want to do, saying what we want to say, praising how we want to pray. But we ain't doing what God wants us to do. When we come here, he wants us to do what he wants us to do and not what we want to do. We, we, we don't like that as human beings because we don't like being told what to do, especially grown folks. Grown folks don't want you telling them what to do. Can I preach up in here? But I was sitting at home studying this, and I was looking at all the grown folks in the world. Amen. And if, 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 if you got to follow some kind of rules and guidelines to get in the club, they'll, they'll do whatever it takes to get up in there. Can I preach up in here to get to Sam's Club? You just can't check out. You got to have a membership, and they pay that money every month to make sure that they can get the deals at the Sam's Club. Can I preach up in here? When it comes to school, the children got to wear uniforms. The teachers got to dress right, and I don't see nobody arguing with that. Can I preach up in here? Oh, they take their money to the grocery store, to Walmart. Can I preach up in here? They take it to the boats. Can I preach up in here? They take it to McDonald's and all of the fast food places. Places. But when it comes to the church, we got a problem with bringing money to the church. Can I preach up in here? Somebody got to tell the world, amen, that if anybody taking your money, it's where you taking it to. But God wants to bless you. Can I preach up in here? And you ain't bringing your money to the preacher. You ain't bringing it to his wife. Can I preach up in here? But you're bringing it to God. Therefore, because God said, if you bring it to me, I'll pour you you out of blessing. Uh, can I preach up in here that you have, won't have room enough to receive? But we don't like being told what to do. So we come to church and we do our own thing. We want to control because in our mind we want to go home and say we had church. And when we go home and say we had church, it had all to do with what somebody did in the worship service. We don't go home and talk about what well, God used them or God did this or God did that. We talk about the person. Can I preach up in here? We God said come to church and serve me. Therefore, he said, also, uh, if you don't like being told what to do, uh, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Uh, he said, come here and serve me. Uh, and he said, serve me gladly. Uh, serve me with gladness. Uh, can I preach up in here? We got a problem doing this because when we come to church, uh, we serving everybody but God. Uh, we serving everybody, including ourselves, uh, because we want to feel good about ourselves uh, when we leave church. Uh, but can I help somebody up in here to know that we will experience real deliverance uh, if we come to church and serve God? We will experience a real move of God if we come to church and serve God uh, and not try to get across our own agendas uh, and our own desires. Uh, oh, yes, Lord. So when we come to church, it should be a mindset uh, of whatever God wants, I want. Uh, can I preach up in here? Whatever God wants to do for me, uh, then I want to receive that. I may come for one thing, but God may want to do another. Can I preach up in here? 
Uh, so when we come to church uh, with a mind to serve God, uh, that leads me uh, to want to come before his presence with singing. Uh, that leads me to want to read a scripture. It leads me to want to pray. Uh, I want to usher. I want to teach. Because uh, not only do I feel glad to do it, uh, I look glad to do it. Uh, you can't tell me that you happy uh, and you look like you upset. Uh, you look like you mad. Uh, you can tell me you're happy to be with me all you want. Uh, but I'm looking at what you presenting to me. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, you got frowns in your face uh, looking all pitiful. God, we know we tired. Uh, brother, I know you tired. Uh, you ain't got to look like that. Uh, you ain't got to act like that. Uh, I work just like you work. I went through just like you went through. But when we come to the house of God, what we went through don't compare to who God is. Can I preach up in here? Because God said he's able to keep you from falling. And the proof that we are in the house this morning is proof that God is still of God of his word. So somebody ought to give God praise in this place. So whatever we do when we come to church, we're supposed to do it for the glory of God. And that's why in verse 3, we are told to know that the Lord is God. When we come to church, we got to have it made up in our mind that no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, no matter what we do know, no matter what we don't know, that God is still God. Then do you know who your God is? Uh, that's the question you got to ask yourself this morning uh, because the word says praise him uh, according to his excellent greatness uh, and we don't praise him like that all the time because uh, we praise him according to how we feel uh, we praise him according to what it looked like uh, can I preach up in here uh, but you got to realize and ask yourself this morning uh, who is God to me uh, come on and ask yourself who is God to me uh, oh you now at this point your mind should get the wondering uh, and your mind should get to going back huh? because some of us was addicted to some stuff huh? and we found out that God was a deliverer huh? some of us was in some broke situations huh? didn't have a lot of money huh? but we found out that God was a provider huh? some of us been in the hospital huh? and needed God to be a healer huh? cannot preach up in here huh? some of us didn't lost loved ones huh? and you really found out that he was a mother huh? to a motherless huh? that he was a father huh? to the fatherless. I feel God up in here. Can I preach up in here? You found out that God. Yes, sir. You found out that God was really a God of his word. You found out that he is a heart fixer. You found out that he is the God that has our power. But you don't realize it until you get your mind right. Yes, God. God, God, God is our God. And he will not change. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. And he just wants you to experience him. When we come to church, he don't want us to come to church and just hear about him. He wants you to experience him. He wants you to experience that he is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere all at the same time. That means he, he don't care more about you than he cares about me. He's omnipotent. That means that he has all power. His power isn't limited. And he knows everything. Meaning that he's omniscient. So knowing who God is to us reminds us that he has made us and not we ourselves. He took something and he made something out of it. See, a lot of people like to call themselves nothing, but Jesus ain't never looked at us as nothing. Can I preach up in here? Oh, yesterday when I was in my room looking at this and, you know, you start thinking about how you think about yourself. And sometimes you think that you ain't worthy. You think that you ain't good enough. You think that you can't do this. You think that you can't do this. But, oh, when you get in your mind and you remember what God thinks about you. 
God said that I took something and made something out of it. Yeah, you was the same something that was red in the hell, but now you're something that's head in the heaven. You was something that didn't have no power. Now you're something that got my power. Can I preach up in here? Oh, he took, he took me and made me something. He made me more than what I thought I was. Oh, even though I felt like nothing, even though I thought I was nothing, even though I felt like nothing and it looked like nothing, didn't feel love like nothing, can I preach up in here? I am what I am because of the grace of God. And we are who we are because of his power. So as the sheep of his pasture, we must always submit to him. And since we are his sheep, one promise that we can take to the bank is that he will take care of us. No matter what we face and no matter what we go through, God will take care of you. All we have to do is trust him. So as we come to the end of this psalm, there's one more thing that this psalm lets us know in verses 4 and 5 that God expects us to bring the church and that one thing, he expects us to praise his name. You know, and you read the word of God, that's the one thing that he ain't going to do for himself. He ain't going to praise himself. Why? Because that's what he got us for. Can I preach up in here? He'll tell you what he can do. He'll tell you what he going to do. But he ain't going to praise himself. Why? Because he expecting his children to come to church and worship him. Notice verse 4 tells us that we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So when we come to God's house, uh, we don't need to treat God's house like it's the psychiatrist's house. Uh, can I preach up in here like it's the doctor's office uh, or like we going to talk to the counselor? Can I preach up in here? We come in the church because we know we coming to see somebody who ain't got a guess about the diagnosis. Uh, oh, he got all the answers. Uh, can I preach up in here? The cattle on a thousand ears is really is his. Uh, so we ain't Come in the church right? we go into the loan office. Uh, say yes to God. We come in the church uh, because we're coming to acknowledge the almighty God. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, and this psalmist is letting us know uh, that not only does God want us to come to church, uh, but he's inviting you to try. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, and when I read that and got to that point, uh, I thought about when you're out in the streets, uh, you got a head of a gang. Uh, you got a head of a family. Uh, you may have a big brother. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, and when he shows up, uh, he wants you to try him. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, he wants you to try him so he can show you just how big and bad he is. So God is saying to us this morning, there ain't no problem too big for me. Ain't no devil that I can't handle. Can I preach up in here? Call him out in the streets and tell him to try me. Can I preach up in here? So God is telling us to stop coming to church, looking pitiful and weighed down. But he said, enter into his gates uh, with thanksgiving. Uh, so no matter how hard it is, uh, we st should be thankful. Uh, say yes, God, uh, because it could have been another way. Uh, say yes to God, uh, but God changed that thing. Uh, he put his hands on it. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, come on and give God praise in this place. Yes, Lord. Uh, He's inviting us uh, to come into his presence uh, because the scripture says, uh, enter into his gates. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, it's a lot of stuff I've been reading over uh, in this simple psalm. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, because when we come to church, uh, I may enter into your gate, uh, but you can't do nothing for me. Uh, I may enter into pastor's gate, uh, but no matter how long pastor preach, uh, he can't do nothing for me. When I come to church, I got to come in and enter into his gates. Say yes to God. So if you don't get your blessing, it shouldn't affect me. Why? Because I'm entering into 
his gates. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. In Acts 3 and 19, it tells us that the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Say yes to God. So when you're tired, when you're feeling burnt out, when you're feeling frustrated, you don't feel like doing nothing. That's when you have to realize that I'm in the wrong gate. Say yes to God. Say yes, Lord. When I'm in the right gate, the word says that times of refreshing will come from the presence Oh, the Lord. Say yes, Lord. So somebody in here this morning, you need to pick yourself up and you need to leave where you're at because you're in the wrong gate. Say yes to God. Now turn yourself around and come on and enter into the gate of the Lord so you can be refreshed, so you can be refilled, so you can be strengthened. Say yes to God. Uh, but when we are refreshed, uh, we want to enter into his courts uh, with praise. Uh, because when you ain't refreshed, uh, you don't feel like praising. Uh, when you ain't refreshed, uh, you got to give him a sacrifice of praise. Uh, can I tell you what that is? Uh, that's when you don't feel like it. Uh, that's when everything look crazy. Uh, and you got to push your way uh, to a praise. Uh, can I preach up in here? Uh, but he told us the answer uh, to where we can always feel huh, like giving him a praise. Huh. He's taking away our excuses huh, for coming to church how we want to. Huh. Can I preach up in here? Huh. He said enter into his gates huh, so I can refresh you. Huh. Because when you show up to church huh, I want you to feel good about it. Huh. I want you to know that I'm God. Huh. I want you to acknowledge me. Huh. Can I preach up in here huh, that I'm the true tribal chief? Huh. Can I preach up in here that I am the one. Can I preach up in here that I am running things? Can I preach up in here? He wants us to be thankful. He wants us to bless his name. In verse 5, he gives us three reasons to praise his name. First, we are told that the Lord is good. Not was good. Not going to be good. But is good. We can praise our God because he is good. Regardless of what happens, God is good. No matter how stuff turns out, God is good. Say yes to God. Yes, Lord. Next, we are told that his mercy is everlasting. We can praise God because he's always showing us mercy. Say yes to God. And mercy is not getting what you deserve. I deserve to be dead. Deserve to be in hell. Deserve to be lost. Deserve to be left. But God looked at me and said, Lord, I love you. Boy, I need you. Boy, I can use you. Boy, I can set you free. Boy, I can change your life. Say yes to God. And he has a word for you this morning. That he loves you. That he can use you. That he can save you. That he can deliver you. That he can help you. Say yes to God. Because his mercies, it is, it is available to you. It is of the Lord's mercies uh, that we are not consumed uh, because his compassions uh, they fail not uh, and they are new every morning uh, great is uh, that faithfulness uh, God is faithful y'all uh, so give him praise on this morning that's a good reason uh, to give God praise. Uh, and lastly, we're told uh, that God's truth uh, endured to all generations. Uh, so what that lets us know is uh, that God's word, uh, it'll never fail. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, in Hebrews 6, 18, uh, the Bible says uh, that God can't lie. Uh, and whatever he promised in his word uh, is as good now. Uh, and it's going to be tomorrow. 
Say yes to God. So God sent me to tell you that now we know how to come to church. Say yes to God. We don't have no excuse. While we come to church the way we want to come to church, say yes to God. So how did you come to church today? How was your mentality when you stepped into the house of the Lord? Say yes to God. But the good thing about it is uh, that we're still in church. Uh, say yes to God. Uh, we're still in the house. Uh, and it ain't too late uh, to get your mind right. Uh, say yes to God. Because uh, he's here. Uh, he's here to touch you. Uh, he's here to help you. Uh, he's here to set you free. Uh, now come on and give God uh, the best praise you can give him right now. Hallelujah, everyone's standing. Everyone's standing, everyone's crying, oh God. And come on and lift this place. Come on and lift your voice. Come on and lift your voice. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah.